morning you get up and there's a very good chance you come into a place in your house that looks something like this. And it is important for many of you to look in this big giant reflective surface, a mirror. We are going to talk about reflection, but do you actually understand how a mirror works? Do you understand how words appear in the mirror and why they do? When I hold up this Lysol container and I read the words, are they forwards or are they backwards? How does a mirror actually work? If I hold my hand like this, did the mirror change it from left to right? No, my fingers are still pointed towards the wall. If I hold my thumb up like this, did the mirror change my thumb from pointing up to pointing down? No, it's still pointing up. When I hold my finger like this, is my finger still pointed away from me in my reflection? No, it's pointed towards me. That tells me something about how a mirror works. There's no left right inversion. There's no up down inversion, but there is an in out inversion. And somehow this inversion causes words to appear in a certain way. Your first task is to write your name in such a way that when you write it on a piece of paper that it appears correctly in the reflection. Go. All right, Suzuki Science, hopefully you guys took an opportunity grade tens to do that little activity. If you didn't, I will repeat myself. What's going on? This unit is optics and we are looking at light. So this is the light of my phone. And you might notice that the light is not just a pure beam. There's some, there's some weird optics happening with this beam as we look at the light in the camera. The camera's lens is doing something to the beam of my light that's causing it to appear in that star form. But that is a topic for another day. So in today's lesson, you are going to be doing several things. Uh, the first thing I wanted you to do was the engage. So in the engage, I asked you to stand in front of a mirror or find a portable mirror if that's, that would be better. And I want you to write your name in such a way that your name will appear correctly when you look at the mirror. So you have to write it in a special way on the piece of paper. You probably already know, I hope so, in grade 10, that when you look at a mirror and you look at words, the words don't appear normal, like I showed you with that Lysol container a moment ago. So again, your task, if you haven't done it already, is to write down a word in such a way that the letters appear normal. Because if you write them normally, you see something like this. So, what is it that you have to do in order to get your name to appear correctly? If we were in class, then we do it as a class. Some people put their hands up. Whoever discovered it first would show everybody the trick of it. Most of us are able to figure it out eventually. Some people just write in the mirror and they just try to write their name so it appears normal in the mirror. But there is a logic to this. And it's one of the questions on your sheet that I'd like you to understand. Because we are doing this distance learning, there's some big gaps. One of the big gaps that we're completely skipping and eliminating is drawing ray diagrams. So visualizing how an image appears for an object in a mirror, the object would be my hand. And if I looked at the mirror, I would see an image of it. So how does that actually occur? We're going to have a big gap there because we're not doing those drawings by hand because we're not there to help you. So you're going to learn some of this stuff through simulation uh, virtually, but it's still not going to be very deep learning. So yes, there is a trick to it. But that trick is, your, is based on your understanding of optics. So there's two things that if we'd had class time that you would have discovered in an activity. So I'll just tell you straight out, you'll see it on the PowerPoint and you'll see a spot on your Google Doc worksheet to write this down. The image location in plane mirrors. So let's say the left hand side here represents a object and the right hand side here represents the image. So you'll notice that this object and this image are always the same distance, right? always the same distance. You should recognize these lines from math class. And that there is a right angle here. This line, when it goes perpendicular to the mirror, so that right angle tells us this, that the object and the image are equal distances apart. So those are two things that are true for an 
object's image in a plane mirror. Okay, so based on this concept, you can look at an object and you'll see that its image is flipped in some way. And just a moment ago in my bathroom, I showed you that flip happens in a that there's, there's many ways things can be flipped. Things can be flipped from left to right, top to down, and in and out. So a plane mirror, what does it do? Well, you already can answer that question because I did it with you. It does not flip it left to right because your hand's still pointing to the right if it was facing right. It doesn't point, doesn't flip from up to down because your hand is still facing up your thumb. But we do know it will flip in to out. And that whole in to out business is pretty complicated to understand it in words. It's one of those things you have to do. You have to go in front of a mirror and do it. And once you do it, you'll get a much better understanding of the concept. Okay? But when you have a word like ambulance or police or fire, these words appear backwards because of this in-out inversion. That's what a plane mirror does. And the other thing that I want you to understand from me, and then you'll go on to the other learnings, is that images come in two varieties. Images can come in a virtual form. So when I look in a mirror, and unfortunately my um, phone here isn't the best mirror. Maybe I put the camera on and we face it. Not sure how well that will work. I wish I had a mirror, but I don't have a mirror, so I can't do this with you. Um, but if you're able to look at a mirror, pretend that this was a mirror here, you would see the image, and the image appears to be behind the mirror. So the image is a virtual image. You cannot interact with it. It's behind something. It's, that's a virtual image. So virtual images are something that we're very familiar with. You might not have used that language, but it's something that we interact with and do with all the time when we deal with reflect reflections. So as you pop through the rest of this PowerPoint here, you'll see reference to the image and looking at the image and seeing where the object appears in the mirror. Okay, so if this is my object and it's standing above me to the left of me, to the right of me, and I look in a mirror, I will be able to see the object in the mirror. And what I'm looking at is the image. In class, we would have practiced drawing these lines and these diagrams, but we don't have that opportunity here. So all I can do is show you and say, you won't have to draw those diagrams for me. Okay, so I'll be a gap in the learning. When you look at an object, one thing to understand is that we see the object because the light rays come from the object and they hit our eye. But there's also light rays going in every direction. And so some are going left and up and down and right, but we don't see those because they're not hitting our eye. We only see the light rays that are hitting our eye. So it's important to understand that the light rays are coming from the object or the image and they're coming to our eye. Those are the ones that we would normally draw. In the interactive simulation that you're going to work through on the physics classroom, you had an opportunity to, to see how we draw an object or an image with a, with a rays. So just play with that and that's really simple and you should have a pretty good understanding of that. Okay. At the end of this, um, the idea was that you would understand why a word appears backwards based on this in-out inversion. It, again, it's, it's somewhat complicated to understand and if you don't, it's not that big a deal. It won't really affect the major learning for this week. We are doing reflection. So normally we do reflection in plane mirrors for a couple days, a few days, and then we do reflection in curved mirrors. Curved mirrors work completely differently. And I wish I had a curved mirror here to show you. I don't, so you got to rely on some videos. But curved mirrors, um, they will take an, a light beam from a location and you can reflect it and you can direct it in a location. And once upon a time, there's this guy by the name of Archimedes. And Archimedes was this Greek scientist who was going to save the Greeks and, from the Romans. And there's this myth of him taking these giant, massive mirrors, these curved mirrors, taking the sun's energy and focusing the sun on the Roman fleet. And all that light would focus on a single ship and would cause the ship to burn and crash and it was over. Realistically, this technology to be able to take a very smooth curved mirror and direct a beam of light in one location, you in your activity, you would have went over the term um, 
uh, specular reflection, and you would have seen another word known as diffuse reflection. So there's some weird things that are going to happen to reflected rays if you don't have an extremely smooth mirror. And the idea of them having a smooth enough mirror to be able to do something like this that long ago, it's kind of ludicrous, to be honest. But we do have mirrors that are that, that, are that smooth. So I had a colleague who I worked with a long time ago. He's now retired, and he worked up in um, northern Ontario, and he had a ton of these, these curved mirrors. And so what he did is he gave these curved mirrors to his students, and he had them uh, run it through. So here we're just going to watch this video of his class. And okay, in this video, on target. In this video, he has this box, and this box is a fuse. So a fuse is, a, is um, it's very temperature sensitive, so it doesn't take much heat to cause a fuse to light. And when the fuse lights, it will cause a big boom. So all you have to do is shine the light on the box, this reflective box that will capture the rays. And I don't know what the kids are doing because there's some people have beams high up on the roof. But it is possible to collect enough heat from these curved mirrors and direct it on a source to cause a boom to occur. So that's pretty cool, right? That's something that would have been fun for us to play with. Well, we don't want to blow things up, but it's fun to play with light and see what light can do. All right? So that is a curved mirror. There's this um, big museum. It's a, kind of like our science center in uh, California, and uh, it's in San Francisco, and it's called the Exploratorium. And some of you, depending on what kind of videos you look at on a regular day, um, you might have seen videos from the Exploratorium. And the Exploratorium has this great video of this cameraman standing in front of this their giant mirror. So they've just got this giant mirror. And I've given you a link, so I want you to look at it. I'm not going to show you the whole thing here, but I want you to, to, um, to watch this. And in this mirror, what this cameraman's doing is he's, he's standing in front of this giant mirror. I think it's like an eight-foot mirror, and he's backing up. No, sorry, he's, he's walking towards the mirror, walking slowly towards the mirror. And as he walks towards the mirror, something weird happens to his body. And so when I went to the Exploratorium a few years ago, in 2015, I think it was, and I was with my family, I was like, oh, that's the Exploratorium, that's that mirror, I saw that video. And so I was like, okay, I gotta do this myself. So I'm gonna upload the video and I'll just play it alongside so you can see what I did. That man that's there, I have no idea who he was. He probably is just wondering who this rude Canadian is that's you know taking up his space and walking weirdly backwards or forwards. I can't remember what direction I was walking in. And so you'll see. And on your Google Doc, I'm asking you what happens to your image as you walk away or walk towards a curved mirror. A plain mirror, your image always stays the same. The plain mirror always has exactly the same image characteristics. In a plain mirror, your image is always the same size. It's not bigger or smaller, it's the same size. The image is always the same attitude. So if you're standing right side up, your image is right side up. The image is always the same distance from the mirror as the object. And the image type is always, always, always virtual. But in a curved mirror, things do change. So as you go through today's lesson, you're going to see two types of curved mirrors, the converging mirror and the diverging mirror. You're going to be doing calculations based on converging mirrors, so there's going to be a lot of calculations, and we're going to actually stay away from the convex mirror, this mirror here. Okay. Your curved mirrors, even though the image seems to change dramatically, they still follow the same laws of reflection as plane mirrors. It's just that the curve adds a whole new wrinkle to the reflection game. You should give us some ideas of the applications of the concave mirror. And there are many. You've seen these things in telescopes if you had a chance to use it, the microscope, which we didn't get a chance to use, the dentist chair, the dentist, who knows when they're going to open. I need to go to it one at some point and get my teeth cleaned. If you have makeup mirrors or shaving mirrors, there's certain things that these mirrors do. This mirror I wanted to get to, I just wanted to show you this. Look at the size of this thing. This thing is like six stories big. It's the biggest solar mirror in the world. And this mirror produces enough heat to make concrete, right? It focuses the beam of heat on this building here and inside of here they work with concrete. It's pretty remarkable. So solar energy, if used properly, can do quite a few things. And of course many of you are probably using satellite TV and a satellite dish. Even though it's not using visible light, it is still reflecting electromagnetic radiation to a central focus. So I'm going to encourage you to work through the activities. I don't think I showed you the worksheet, so let me just show you the worksheet before I sign off here. 
and this is just to give you an idea of what this week is about, you'll notice the minimum timing. The minimum timing, big gaps. As it stands, even if you complete all the work, there's still big gaps. But if you do the minimum, you'll get your three hours done, but you're not going to be able to really do physics in grade 11 or 12. So let's divide into parts. So part one, you're going to be going to the physics classroom. I mentioned that last week. And in part two, well, part one, the second video is in Learn 360. So you're going to work through that. And it's going to talk, see, only the first five segments is going to talk about plane mirrors. The Learn 360 physics offerings are kind of archaic, but they serve the purpose. They teach you the concept. The person's voice is a little uh, monotonous. So just work with them, you know, get up and walk around every few minutes to keep your mind focused. Uh, part three here, this video is on curved mirrors. Only watch the first 30 minutes. And if within that first 30 minutes, there's a few places that you can skip. From that information, you can answer these questions. Notice green is the minimum, yellow is complete, purple is, you know, going all out. And that purple one here, that's when I'm walking backwards from the mirror. So, you know, I get to be a star. And then part two is the math, right? So in this part, you're going to go to Khan Academy. And I'll assign that to the class. So you'll see it and you're going to learn how to solve equations. And then you're going to practice. So these equations you see on my worksheet right now, we're going to change it up slightly because there's some scientific notation and we didn't teach you scientific notation. So we're not going to put that extra wrinkle in there and make you all confused. We'll keep the numbers really straightforward. But there's some practice here. And this practice will be divided into three and four colors. Each block represents a slightly different style of question. And you'll be using formulas that will be provided to you during the video from Ms. Dave. So we'll be using Ms. Dave's video lesson again and from the um, uh, physics, cl physics classroom. So if you are doing the green, the minimum, you should answer the first question from each color. So blue, green, light green, yellow, and peach. If you're doing the complete, you do two questions. If you're doing everything purple, then do all the questions. It's all practice. Then the flip grid this week you are going to be demonstrating a question that's similar if you're doing the minimum to either the first two colors one of these because these are easier questions and if you are doing the complete the yellow so you're looking for a better understanding or even to see your mark go up then you're going to do a question similar to this last week you were able to demonstrate a question that was already provided this time i've given you the answers so you will not be demonstrating one of these questions but you'll be demonstrating a question like it and i'll give you that question on either probably Thursday. Wednesday, I'm doing a live lesson. So last week was just help. But this week, I'm, I'm going to work through the problems. I'm going to work through one of each problem. And I'm going to give you a hand. If you have any questions, I will help you. And after that live lesson is done, I'm going to release the question they'll be doing for the Flipgrid. So on Friday, you'll be submitting this Google Doc. You'll be submitting your Flipgrid calculation like you did last week. And you'll be submitting the um, or completing the end of week questions in D2L, the multiple choice questions for straight knowledge. Okay, so those will be your three submissions. When you're trying to answer these questions, it's fine to do it on paper, do a scan of the paper, a picture of the paper, embed it in the document, and then submit it in Google Classroom, and you'll be set. That's it. I'm done. Enjoy the activities, and I will see you on Wednesday.